Hey guys, welcome back. Lucian here with you again, hanging out in my test world. And in today's video, we're going to talk about AE2. That's right, AE2 from Algorithm X2. We're going to talk about how to auto craft and how to automate the inscriber press. So if you're new to AE2, if you remember the advanced processors and the basic processors from AE1, well, some of the same functionality is carried over to AE2, but there's a new method to obtain them. So we're going to jump right into this. This is a new block called the inscriber. So the way this works is we have inscriber presses. And what we're going to do is take a press in here and we're going to press any of these four materials to get the corresponding circuit and silicon out. So pure Certus Quartz gets a calculation circuit, a diamond gets an engineering circuit, a gold ingot gets a logic circuit and silicon gets a sil silicon circuit. So we have a calculation press in there. If we throw in a piece of pure Certus Quartz, we are going to get out a calculation circuit. Just like you see right there. And you can see we had a nice little progress bar with a uh, percentage indicator on that right side. So once we have these circuits and silicon out, the next step is to place in a piece of silicon with a piece of redstone and any of the corresponding other circuits and that will get you a logic circuit, an engineer, or I'm sorry, a logic processor, an engineering processor, a calculation processor. And I'll show you that process very quickly as well. So not bad, it's a little time consuming, very tedious and a little bit boring. So let's automate all the things. So over here I have a very basic system. I have ME controller, energy acceptor, creative energy cell, a drive with just a 1K, two terminals. Now four of these inscribers right here because we have four different presses, right? Some interfaces all rotated to insert into the back of the inscribers and then I pulled off some of the smart cable. Chose to use smart cable because I want to be able to look at the Walia tooltip and actually see how many channels I'm using. So that's something new that's also come about in AE2 is the notion of channels. Now with this smart cable and just a regular Fluix cable it can only transmit eight channels and when I say eight channels eight different pieces, eight different blocks that are requesting or sending data. Okay so you can see that I actually have, if I look down here, I'm actually using six of my eight channels, four interfaces and two terminals. So that's how we get to our six. Now this controller, when using smart cable, can put off eight channels per block side. Okay, so that's why I'm using this over here. So these are the new terminals. So you can see I have a crafting terminal right here, just like in old days, and we have a new one, which is called a pattern terminal. Alright, so that's kind of my basic system. So now let's jump into it. So this is something we also kind of did in AE1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that if you put in a one pure Certus Quartz, that will give one calculation circuit. And I'm in code. So on this pattern terminal, it's very similar to the pattern encoder block from AE1, but it's just now called a terminal, and it's now actually pulling off the AE network. It has to be hooked up. Now, a lot of times when you hook up this terminal, it'll actually be in this menu right here. This menu is not the one you need. This is purely for uh, just straight up processing. For instance, gold ingot goes into gold nuggets. Well, I can't change this. Now if I switch over to this setting, this one's actually where I can actually set which the output that I want. And it will actually give me three different outputs. Let me turn Skype off so it stops chiming in. So let's cool. So let's set this up. So if I press shift while well, I'll do that in a second while well, I'm out of the interface. So let's go ahead and set this up. So one gold ingot will give me one logic circuit. 
and code. One diamond will give me one engineering. And one silicone. I do not have a silicone. Must have not grabbed it or threw it down. Okay, so now I'm going to code. So if I step away, I can press shift while these are in my inventory. I've switched to my survival inventory. I can see what they are. It's a pretty cool way to kind of look at what we're at. So this press right here is an engineering press. So I know that's going to get the diamond one, right? This one is a calculation. So that's going to get the calculation pattern. This is the silicon. So this will get the silicon pattern. And finally, this must be the logic, which gets the gold logic one. Click in there. Okay. Now, one other thing about this, these inscribers do need power, but they cannot receive power from the adjacent interfaces. So you cannot share power this direction. However, I have hooked up a piece of cable to this side. They can share power this direction. So even though this is hooked up, it's not actually using an extra channel because it's just supplying power. It's not actually using the data, which is more of what the channel's for. Okay, so cool. So now we have this set up. So it's kind of simpler, kind of what AE1 has done, but it's just a little bit more, a uh, couple more steps involved. So now if I go into my crafting terminal, you can see I now have these on uh, being able to craft. So if I actually, let's say I want a printed engineering circuit. So I will request that. Bam! So you see I cannot craft this because I don't have any crafting CPUs available. And you can see that it's requesting 27 bytes of processor space but can't do it. So again something new with AE2 which I kinda like is we now have these crafting multi-blocks. So Let's do time set day again. Jump over here. You can see we have several different ones. And these, again, like our multi block, you can form them up. I think the only rules about the multi block, it has to stay in a cuboid shape. No air blocks, no other blocks as well. So you see you have a 64K, a 16K, a 4K, a 1K. So remember that was requesting 27 bytes. So this is going to be. 1024 bytes. So this is well within uh, this crafting operation is well within the capability of this crafting processor, uh, crafting storage. So again to go along with that we have a crafting unit which is kind of the brain of the operations and I'm going to throw down a crafting coprocessor. Basically the coprocessor is going to let you just queue up and add more processes. So like if you if I requested one of each, that will kind of queue them up and process them. Otherwise, it would only do one at a time and it actually would refuse your second crafting operation. Okay, cool. So multi-block structure. Let's go ahead and just put it down there. You can see the multi-block is formed and it looks really cool. I love all these flashing lights. Don't know how they're going to do as far as lag and a frame rate lag, but we'll see. But I like the way they look. So you can see on the wall, yeah, we have everything is online and if I jump over here to my smart cable you can see now I'm actually pulling an extra channel because this counts as one multi-block and it's using one channel uh, for data pass through. So let's go back to my terminal and you can see it crafted that logic circuit because now it has a crafting CPU. So again thousand 24 available. We need 27. Start it. So it takes a little time to process. But next, actually, you can see, finish that printed circuit. But we don't have a way to import it back into the network. So yeah, it processed, but it's still sitting in there. So now we got to figure out how we're going to get it back into the network. Well, simple way is to use import buses. Okay, so let's just slap down some import buses just like that. But now you notice 
we have seven of our eight channels being used. So I'm not going to be able to use this white channel to hook these up. I have to pull off another piece of line, which is now my blue channel. And then you can see I'm using four of the eight channels because I have four import. Each of them are pulling a channel because they're each passing through individual data. Makes sense, right? You can see now that printed circuit is now back into the inventory. So if I say, okay, I want a calculation, start, go. So you can see that's got a nice little rendering in there, in there, sucked back into the network. Cool, ready to go. So that system's not too bad, right? Pretty easy. All you have to do is kind of wrap your head around the whole channel thing and it makes it a little bit simpler. Now this smart cable is a little bit more expensive than normal Flux cable, but I'm using that so we can look at how many channels we're using in our design. So let's now go to the final step. It's putting it all together. All right, so let me grab an inscriber, grab some more pieces and parts, and let's do this thing. Okay, um, let's do it like that. So now I have another inscriber, because we now need an inscriber to put all these pieces together, right? So let's do it like this. So what I have, I have an export bus here, and I have, let's do an export bus here and import bus there and interface interface can actually you can use it as a full block like over there or you could just put it into a shapeless crafting grid to make it a flat one I'm gonna put inscriber on I'm sorry a uh, interface on top and again you know, like I said this block is going to need power so we have to send it some power. Miss that. And let's power from the back. That sounds good, right? And you can see we're now using four of the eight channels. Right? Two import two exports, one import, and one interface. And that fifth one that's hook connection, it's only just putting power in there. So not bad. So next we're going to do is on the bottom, I'm going to tell this guy to export silicon. Always export silicon all the time, no matter what. But you can see it's not exporting any silicon because we don't have any in our network. Well, have no fear. Remember in the old interfaces how there was a little tab on the side to say craft when needed well now we have a crafting card so it says crafting behavior you stock the items first or craft items to use for exporting so now should be crafting up a silicon chip for us and then exporting it over which it has okay so on this one I'm gonna say export redstone but I don't need a chip over here because I have redstone in my network and let's go put redstone in this center channel so now we have to put this all together so what I'm going to tell us is that if you want a logic processor you need to put in a printed circuit. Okay, put this in my interface. Now, that should be facing down, which should be fine. So for now, if I go into my network, now I have a full logic processor available for crafting. So it's not going to use 45 bytes because it's a two-step process. But if I step back, you should see it making one, which is in there, st stamps it, 
sends it over here with that and then suck right back into the network. And there we have our one. And now we can do this for each of the processes. So if I grab some more these, if I grab a calculation, got the lo logic and I need the engineering. Okay. So if I want calculation processor, bam, we go, and engineering, there we go, run over here, now I have all three of them, the three main processors that we're going to need through all of our recipes in AE2, now on AutoCraft with this very simple once you understand it system. Now I can compact this down a little bit and I've also seen other ways to automate this system. Um, I watched King Daddy DMAC and he actually automated this system using extra utilities which is kind of a cool uh, kind of a cool build. Now if you guys want to see other ways to automate this system let me know and I will try to do it for you. I can't guarantee you but I will definitely give it a try no problem. Um, but hopefully this is useful. Hopefully you can get a kind of better understanding of the AE2 and this is the very beginning stages of auto crafting. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any co uh, questions. I will get them answered. Uh, please like this video so it gets a little more uh, uh, viewing power if you did enjoy the video. Uh, if you're new to my channel, thanks for coming and sticking around. I have lots of other videos going up, so check them out. My Patreon forums and Twitter are all down below, so you can check those out if you feel up to it. Otherwise, my name is Illusion. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you guys on the next one.